Hey guys, today I want to talk about our king oyster mushrooms. I've been doing a lot of research with king oysters for about four years now, and really it's taken a while, but I think this is a mushroom that we've really figured out. And this year we've come up with a lot of different strategies, and a really unique strategy how to get a successful second flush in our outdoor greenhouses. And you know, I don't think anyone really grows king oysters the way we do. We grow them outdoors in greenhouses, and we get these really nice thick stems, but we also get these really big caps on some of these mushrooms here. It's just a fantastic mushroom. Chefs love these. This is by far one of my favorite mushrooms to cook. Just cut them up really thick slices in the pan, a little bit of butter and oil. Really nice mushroom that holds a lot of texture. So today I want to go over our process with king oysters and kind of just teach you a little bit of what I've learned over the last four years. Okay, so with king oysters, I slice the bag, expose the mushrooms, and then we're just trimming the base just to make them look nice for the chefs. Very similar to the way you, if you're harvesting porcini in the forest, we're just kind of carving up the stem, making it nice and clean for the chefs, just like this. And then if the mushroom's uh, a little squishy, we, uh, we often will just throw those out. You want them to be really firm. That's how you're going to get a long shelf life on these. And it's often you'll get a few mushrooms in the bag that have just simply aborted. And they're just completely like squishy. They're going to die and really be nothing, uh, no, no substance to them in a few days. Even this one, it looks okay, but see, it's, it is squishy. So that's no good. Obviously, if I wanted to, I could collect all those and eat them myself. But I'm usually way too busy to be worried about that. And all of our baskets are 10 pound baskets for King Oyster. We sell these for $12 a pound uh, to chefs or $20 a pound at the market. So right now we're just playing around with substrate mix. The uh, master's mix, which is this, this is 50% soy hull, 50% hardwood fuel pellets. We're yielding about a pound point three, so a pound 30 per block. And then the, uh, when we're doing the bran and wood chips, we're often getting about 0.5 to 0.6 per block. We're, uh, we're just moving into sawdust right now. <clears throat> and we're going to be playing around with 35 to 40 percent soy hulls. So that's where we're moving towards that. But uh, we won't be uh, doing king oysters until the fall again. So all that research is going to have to wait until end of September for us this year. But either way, these are beautiful. We uh, we charge enough for these that it's still worth worthwhile uh, with even just a smaller yield. What's really significant is that we've started figuring out how to get a really good second flush. And for our, for our, for our greenhouse, we, uh, we open them just like this. We're gonna get our first flush, but all this mycelium up here, it dries, and then mushrooms aren't gonna wanna grow on that anymore. So we're actually collapsing the bag like this 
putting them on the shelf. And then once we get a significant number of these, we start actually inverting these and pushing the substrate to the front of the bag just creating like a little bit of an air pocket and then we just cut a little slit just to initiate fruiting that goes on the shelf and then when when it's ready we'll just actually expose it so when we start getting some pinning on the on the bag here we'll actually just cut this, the top straight off and we'll get a nice second flush we started doing that the mycelium on the bottom hasn't dried out so we get actually a really nice yield for the second flush. Over in, in the past we've actually just kind of sporadically got the second flush and we hadn't really figured out how to do that in our grow room and that's all new research for us. I don't really know indoor grow rooms how successful they are with getting second flush kings but we get a lot of sun exposure in our greenhouses so the mycelium always dries out and I've tried rehydrating the blocks I've tried flipping them so that the mycelium kind of bounces back and then try to fruit them at the top again, but it doesn't really seem to work. But ever since we started inverting the bags and growing out the bottom, we've started having really, really good success. So that's just only going to make our business more profitable. I would say the most difficult requirement with king oysters is that they require a cold shock for pinning. And if you have an indoor grow room, you can obviously initiate this in a couple ways. You can use an AC unit, you could refrigerate them, you could probably spray them down with some cold water and just keep your grow room a little bit colder. There's lots of different ways to do it. But in a seasonal environment, as the summer heats up, you know, if you have warmer temperatures, you're going to have it find it very difficult for king oysters to fruit. Now, my business, I'm very fortunate that I live in a, in a desert climate. We actually get a lot of colder nights here on the farm. And if I time it right, the king oysters will pin at night. And then as the temperatures warm up, they speed up and start growing really fast in the bags. And this kind of goes with when you're fruiting, they're also sensitive to warmer temperatures. So if we get temperatures near the high 30s in Celsius, we're actually looking at harvesting all of the king oysters because they're going to start getting stressed from the heat and they'll actually start dying. And you can tell this because they'll be a little bit squishy and they're not going to be firm anymore. If you have a really nice healthy king oyster, it's very firm and it's pure white and it just looks extremely healthy. So King oysters are very sensitive to temperature and being a seasonal grower I only can grow this kind of at the beginning of my year and just at the point where where summer is starting but everything has to be pinning at that point and then once it gets into the high 30s I'm not growing king, king oysters anymore all my greenhouses are going to get gutted and they're going to get flipped and king oysters are going to be done and then in the fall I need to time it as temperatures are just starting to drop and you know you can have the mycelium in the grow rooms when it's warmer and it's not going to kill the mycelium it's just the mushrooms aren't going to fruit so it really just depends how much time you have to wait um, for our business this year it got warm about three weeks ago and I had a lot of king oysters going in production and they literally sat for about two, two and a half weeks before they started pinning. And they they just took their time. But now we have lots of king oysters starting to grow because temperatures dropped uh, probably about 10 days ago. So it's it's not a big deal. It's just you need to be prepared for those temperature swings and if you live in a similar desert climate like me you actually can take advantage of the cold nights so anyways guys hope this video was helpful i i'm going to try to do a, more videos specific to our mushroom strains we do sell mushroom cultures send me an email if you guys want to see our list the particular king oyster strain that i'm growing right now came from germany and we call that 054 and <clears throat> I've done a lot of research It's taken us about four years to kind of really figure out how to grow king oysters and that really goes with a lot of the strains we grow and in most situations 
the information is not really out there on how far you can take these strains and stress them before you really can't grow them. This is all information that that I have had to figure out because I have a seasonal business. So anyways guys, I'll keep you guys posted. More videos coming out. We'll see you in the next video.